folks ask the name of you. That's all right. Uh, my name is Hayes Brown. I'm an attorney. I'm speaking on behalf of Misty Bartlett, okay. whose home is the Snow Rogers home we've been referring to. It would be adversely affected by the institutional zoning of the 92-foot lot in question. That's the only one I'm speaking on. We're speaking in opposition to that. Uh, this matter comes to you on the third vote of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the first vote was sent back so that some members could recuse themselves yes. if they wish uh, because of potential conflict of interest. The second vote that was sent um, did not receive a favorable recommendation. It was a two-to-two -two tie. And uh, for some reason, that vote was not sent to you, but rather it was sent back again a third time to Planning and Zoning where they voted to uh, send it to you for the third time. So, am I to understand that the zoning made it upon their self to table a matter for another meeting? That's correct. That when it did, did not receive a favorable vote, the decision was to table it and have the vote taken a third time. For the discussion amongst members of the zoning board right. and taking other opportunities. Correct. My contention is the okay. two to two vote should have been sent to you in the first place. <coughs> okay. But um, you're. This, the, the point is you're entitled to accept or reject the recommendation of the planning is on yes. this is where the decision is yes. going to be made uh, the my client's house was built in 1898 it's a two-story uh, structure built by snow rogers i passed by here a little while ago and i passed by snow rogers drive apparently is a poor member of the community but it's actually the the what i want you to focus on is the fact that it's it's uh, part of an extensive residential neighborhood of course, if you stand in the back lot of the church and your back is to Morris Majestic Road and you're looking at, you're standing in the church parking lot and you're looking at that residential neighborhood, you would see my client's house on top of the hill. And you would see to the right a residential neighborhood. You would see to the left a residential neighborhood, including the Booth House, who is all, which is also a historic house. You would see behind it a residential neighborhood. The residential neighborhood that I'm speaking of is currently uh, buffered by vegetation and the presence of the street that you mentioned, for example. Irene Street, I believe, is what you were yes. referring to. It's not been built, but it was planned by the city when the city was first laid out. There is a street called Lucas Street that's, par that's at the, in the same direction as that that has been built. These, these streets, either built or proposed, serve as a buffer, including the vegetation that's there as a buffer between that extensive historical, uh, extensive residential neighborhood and the church itself. Currently, this entire neighborhood shares only one side of its property with Enon Baptist Church. However, if you rezone the 92-foot lot in question, the, there will be a parking lot inserted into this residential neighborhood. Now, much has already been said about this uh, project and no doubt you've had possibly an opportunity to reflect on it before this meeting has occurred today uh, but if you don't already see that the this ordinance should be denied that's not already opinion I don't know there's, there's a lot I could say to you to change your mind but if you are open to suggestions and open to um, you're still on the fence and could go either way then I'd like to address the merits of the ordinance if you haven't looked at the comprehensive plan in a while um, I would encourage you to do so because if you do you'll be reminded that Morris is primarily a residential community uh, it's the contention of that study that residential uses are better served by maintaining a cohesiveness of the residential areas that's the only way to protect existing homes and that's the best way to attract a potential residential uses for your city a residential atmosphere plays a large part in the attractiveness of the community to your, to your existing people and people that you might hope might build a home here or to live here. The city, this city of Morris's highest development potential lies in maintaining and enhancing your residential communities. Now the proposed zoning for the 92 foot lot does not support those values. This institutional use that's being projected into the residential is not a step down or a transitional zoning that was intended to protect the residential neighborhood from other uses. In fact, it's an expansion of institutional zoning into an existing stable family neighborhood. And if, if, if you approve it, this will be the first time that a time-honored boundary that has existed between residential and institutional uh, will be breached. 
the breach will occur by piercing into a residential neighborhood with the, with the 92 foot lot that's both physically and visually joined to the church, not to the neighborhood. I think a church representative described it one time as a finger, and I think that's probably an apt, an apt description. The reasonable boundaries between this institutional use and the, and the residential use will be breached, and the message that you would be giving to potential residents is that despite what our comprehensive plan says, your neighborhood is not safe from encroachment. Now the, um, the church has proposed institutional for a parking lot. That's what they filled out on their, on their petition. And I'd like you to consider the parking lot is probably, po very possibly, uh, the most offensive use within residential, within uh, institutional uses. The lot is out of plain sight of Morris Majestic Road. And uh, currently my client says that people already park in the church parking lot who apparently have no connection you know, with the church. But this lot is out of plain sight. It makes it more difficult for public safety to monitor uh, what uh, uses are being made. This is going to invite non-church uh, uses of that lot, no matter what the church might want. Uh, but worst of all, the legal uses that this uh, parking lot would entail are even worse. Now the lighting which they describe, which is baffled, they I guess they give the impression that they had a bigger plan and they scaled it down. I haven't seen that. We've only seen one plan. We just saw it the last third planning zone. They finally came out with a plan with the lighting. It down to 12 feet, they say. But this, while it's down lighted, of course, it doesn't address the headlights from cars that are coming at all hours of the day, or all hours of the night. This use involves slamming doors, and if your car's like my car, when I lock my car door, the, the horn goes off to tell me that my, my, my uh, door is locked. All hours of the day and night, and even more hours than really a, a, an office building might, because an office building, approximately 5 o'clock, everybody clears out and it's completely in. Can I address something there? You said slamming doors and alarms going off. Well, you're going to have that right there at the church anyway, which is right in front of her house. She's going to hear it there. She's going to hear it in the parking lot. You're not talking that far away. So it's not going to be that much of a difference as far as the noise is concerned. Well, it's your contention we should have more of that? I don't see how there's going to be any more of it. I mean, they're, they're going to have the same amount of people that go to that church. Well, my, my, client, my, my client has a pool in her backyard. Mm -hmm. And currently, there's no mm -hmm. one slamming doors and, uh, and, and turning their lights on her right now. Now, they will if you rezone it. They certainly will, but it's not happening now. You've got the power to stop that. Well, if, if, if they have enough to fill that parking lot, too, they, they're not saying that they're going to fill that except who's to say that they might not fill it but in the mornings you know, they have more people come in the mornings than they do in the evenings and on wednesday nights well i'd like for you to see I, I mean i've drove by yeah. and seen how packed it is in the morning i've drove by and seen how packed it is you know how not packed it is on wednesday night and in the evening time all right, well, how, how big of a sign is going to be needed to park here only at certain times in the morning? I'm not if saying you're that a they senior, have to do that. I'm just saying If you're that. handicapped or if you have small children, those, those uses are not implied in this whatsoever. They haven't restricted that. They haven't restricted that. They just say they're going to do a parking lot. But also, if you have less people, that means there's going to be more parking lots. In the evening, there's going to be more parking places closer also. Well, I, I, I certainly would hope there, there's closer that's parking. That's what I would hope, too. Look, keep in mind, sir, they tore up approximately 50 parking spaces mm -hmm. to build this building. Mm -hmm. They didn't come to you and ask you, is this a good idea? Mm -hmm. They created this problem for themselves, and now they expect you to fix it. <coughs> and well, I'm they saying... They own this property. Mm -hmm. my, client, this problem. my client owns her property. It's his own residence. This property was purchased by the church before your client purchased her home. She had the right to find with a small amount of investigation that the church did on this problem. Mm -hmm. But she bought the house without doing any, any I did research that, when, on I, that. when I bought my property, I asked the gentleman that, that owned the property behind me what he planned on doing with it before I even bought my property where I live at now. Well, my so, client I mean, bought the property. can do. Okay, fine. Let's go there, okay? My client bought her property 
and that property was zoned, the property next to her was zoned residential. Okay? Shouldn't she be entitled to rely on that? That it was zoned residential? Are you aware of a, of a, a law that was passed in 2000 by the Congress called the Religious Land Use Person Act? Are you familiar with that? Well, what relevance does it have? Why don't you tell uh, me about it? Uh, the relevance is we as a town cannot deny the zoning. I'll tell you why. Because they have the right as a church, religious base, to go and file civil suit, appeal its court of the letter. And that will put the town into a civil suit or into a corpse with them on a litigated battle that this town cannot finance. Now, if we deny that and the church decides this is what they want to do, she's going to lose fire, she's going to lose police, and she's going to lose every other thing she has in this town because this town will have to shut down. Well, you're telling me your hands are tied. You have to approve? According to the law. According to the law. Well, why am I saying It's here? a federal law. I don't know. Why are we having this here? Well, why did you not research and find this out? If you're an attorney, you should have found this out yourself. Is there any point in me going for it? Religious land use and institutionalized person act. Well, you, if your hands are tied, you have to approve this. Of but not. did you not research this yourself? Are you not familiar with this? You're an attorney. And in 2000, this was passed. It's a federal law that was passed. Well, I, my question to you, do I need to continue? My question to you is, did you not research and find this out? <laughs> Sir, I, I'm... I'm happy to address the merits of this if you want me to. You can if address you don't the merits, want me to, to, but let me explain that. You're addressing these merits as telling us we can't or we shouldn't. But the federal law says we have no choice. Well, if we have no choice. choice, do you want me to But here's research? the thing I want to know is, did you not do any research to find out if there was any law that says the town cannot do anything? You, you and, and I are going around in circles. Yeah, well, we are. And also, you're saying the church is not... A, a part of the community. Everywhere I've ever lived, the church has always been part of the community. Have I, not, have I said the church is not part of the community? You're sitting there saying the church is invaded into the community. A residential neighborhood, sir. It's part of the community. Okay? She had the right to find out where who owned that property. The people prior to her was offered that property. And the ones prior to that were offered that property. They so chose not to purchase it. The church then bought the land. She could have done a little research, found out that that property was owned by the church, went to the church, which she used to attend. I never walked in the door of being invited. Sir, your facts are, are a little off. My client has never been offered the property. Because your client didn't live there at the time the property was for sale. Well, listen, the ch what, who was here first? The Snow Rogers, huh? <laughs> and the Snow Rogers is the one who offered the property to the church to the church or the person who brought the house after they let it well listen if, if that's if that's the way the decisions are made then i'm not sure that we need a planning and zoning commission i'm not sure that we need a city council to even decide whether a petition is well, appropriate well i tell you what we can do we can we can do this right here we can deny this zone to appease your client if that's make you happy and make her happy we can do that if we do that, then we're putting ourselves up for a suit by the church. And you don't think the reciprocal would do also be true? Do you think this town of Morris has the money to go against the attorney general in the appellate's courts? Do you think this town of Morris has the money to defend a lawsuit for acting arbitrarily and capriciously as you have just announced? How are you saying it? When I'm sitting here holding my hand, the law that was passed in 2000. It's a federal law. How are you telling me that? When I'm looking at the law, federal law, not local, not municipality, not state, I'm looking at federal. Clearly defined federal law. So you tell me w which side am I supposed to look at? I don't believe I'm acting arbitrarily. I believe I'm acting according to the law, the federal law. So you're telling me that if we act by the federal law that she's going to continue to take us into court and sue us because we 
abided by federal law? Well, one is that thing, what your threat is one thing, to us? One thing that I know... Or is that I'm, the point you're trying to excuse me? It wasn't threat. Is that the point you're trying to make? One thing that I know I'm not going to do is dispute the law with you. Okay. Then I'm not going to dispute it with you. But this is the federal law. Would you like time to research this? Because I'll be happy to let you have that time. Are you serious? <laughs> If you want to research this law and find out that I'm lying to you or telling you a crime, I mean, which do you, do you think is something I made up? Do you want me to go on or sit down? I'm asking you a question. I, we're going to have a discussion. And you're representing her. I'm not going to have it with her. I'm going to have it with you because she chose to let you represent her. I'm not going to argue the fact that it's not on the Alabama register as a historical home. I'm not going to deny that. I got the stick that says it is. I believe the man will the man say. Well, I, I I'm asking you as her attorney, are you not aware of this law? I genuinely believe that you think that your hands are tied. That you think that what, what the church has put up in front of you today must be approved. Okay. You carry because on. You continue, and then we'll deliberate amongst ourselves here, and I'll let the council make the decision whether or not they think their hands are tied. Okay. May I proceed? Carry on. The front setbacks that are observed by this. I guess I'm not here to talk about what goes on in the building. I, I was here to talk about what goes on outside the building. And what goes on outside the building is that, according to their plan, they haven't observed any sort of setback requirements. So institutional requires a 35-foot setback. There's no setback here because the uh, parking lots go as far forward as you possibly can put parking lots. I believe that a reasonable accommodation for that would be to bring the parking lots back to the same setbacks that the Snow Rogers house is observing. So that you could stand on the front porch of the Snow Rogers house, you would not see parking lots. You would not see parking spaces. This this plan does not observe any sort of setback to that to that um, to that extent. I don't say that to say that you should approve the uh, ordinance, but I do say that to say that what the church has been has given you is an unreasonable uh, proposal. Now, one thing that I hope you'll consider is that there are two separate ordinance ordinances for you here today. Uh, you don't have to vote on the same. But you don't have to vote for them at the same time. And I would urge you to recognize that the four-acre lot that we haven't talked about much. Uh, I think was was mentioned earlier just briefly, but the four acre lot has a set of givens that are different from the 92 foot lot. And uh, if you approve rezoning the four acre lot, what you'll be doing is redirecting the church's growth to a more appropriate location. And uh, it apparently it tends to make some use of the four acre lot, but for, for what it is, we're not sure. The implication is, has been that it's it's not possible for people to walk across Count, Counts Road, but I, I, I have a feeling that some at some point in time that four acre lot is going to be developed. The um, members of the Planning and Zoning Board were given an opportunity to recuse themselves uh, from direct conflict of interest, and I don't know if anyone here intends to poll the members in a similar fashion. I don't know if there's any sorts of connections. But if I would ask you to voluntarily recuse yourself from voting. If you are a member or regular visitor, uh, of Enon Baptist Church or an employee or if you were in a position of responsibility when the lot was purchased or at least disclose that to the public so it would be uh, transparent. These are the last uh, comments I'll make and I'll close. Um, I, I, oftentimes city council people are, are asked to make difficult decisions and, um, and vote on controversial things. How a decision is made is actually a very interesting subject. Um, we all like to think we make rational decisions, but sometimes our decisions are uh, informed by things we'd rather not see inform our decision. Things like fear and uh, things like um, bias. 
I'd like to ask you to think about some things uh, when you make your decision. One, are you influenced by your piece of paper that you have there? We say our hands are tied, I can't do anything. That will inform my vote. I'd like to ask you whether you believe it, it because it's a church, just because a church, there's a sense of inevitability to this. We have to vote yes. I'd like to ask you if you've ever heard or said these words to yourself, I'd never vote against a church. Do you believe that because the church has gone to so much trouble and has prepared this PowerPoint presentation and made their presentation and, and invited these fine gentlemen to, to speak, that, that they should re be rewarded with a yes vote. Have you ever thought there might be some members of the church, if you vote against it, might not like you if you voted against it? Uh, were any of you influenced by the mayor's uh, public haranguing of my client at the last, at the last uh, meeting? And did, did his obvious contempt for her make you think less of her so that she does not deserve your vote? Since the mayor will not vote, do you think you owe it to him to serve as his proxy and vote in a way that you think he would have, would have if he had been here? Or do you believe that the church should win because this is America, and in America, we do what we want with our property? When you vote, someone's going to make a motion, and because these are two separate properties, uh, with a different set of givens, I think it would be entirely appropriate to handle them on a separate basis. Um, closing, my client wants to thank you for your public service. I think you're all trying to do what you think is best for the city of Morris as you see it. My client has no problem with the mission of the church. She goes to church too. But what she is uh, doing, and she hopes you believe and hopes you agree with her, that the church should redirect its growth to a more appropriate area, which is the four acres that they've already purchased. She urges a yes vote on the four acre lot and a no vote on the 92 acre lot. Thank you.